Oh, we have a herd of wild donkeys right here. The donkeys were brought over by the Spanish in the 1500s. The animals are known locally as burricos, which combines the Spanish words burro and rico, because back then only the richest people could afford these animals, which were used to transport both goods and people. In the early days, Aruba was home to around 1,500 donkeys, and they contributed greatly to the island's economy. As time passed, the donkeys were replaced with other modes of transportation, and most of them were set free by their owners to roam the island. Then in the 1900s, tragedy struck. A severe disease caused many of the donkeys to disappear from the island and by the early 70s only 20 donkeys remained on the island. By the late 80s the animals were rapidly approaching extinction, so a sanctuary was established to help revive the population. And today there are around a hundred donkeys roaming free on the island. You can leave the snorkel darling. Yeah. <laughs> We are by the Wadirikiri cave. This cave is named by old Indian chief. Also, this cave is 26 million years old. Up there used to be the coastline, and down here used to be the bottom of the sea. The erosion of the ocean made inside the limestone coral and make some holes inside. But if you go inside, take your goggles off. We work up into the Wadirikiri cave. Kwadirikiri is actually a system of three different caves, which are all interconnected by a series of passages. Altogether, the cave runs for a length of around 490 feet, making it the longest cave system on the island. The cave is also the focus of one of the island's most famous legends. The legend says that an Indian chief imprisoned his daughter in this cave because her lover was unacceptable to him. Her beloved was imprisoned in the nearby Tunnel of Love, but both lovers managed to meet underground. According to the legend, both of them died in this cave, and their spirits vanished into heaven through the holes in the roof. Oh my god, that car is gonna get amped up. That car is not gonna get out of here. What are you doing? I bet this isn't most people's idea of a Caribbean holiday. Down there is the natural pool. Our guys getting ready to jump. A Ruben style. <laughs> I hope he's okay. We need a ride back. I don't see him. I returned to Fort Tsutman because today is a special night in Fort Tsutman because 
every Tuesday night for the past 25 years, the Ford has been hosting the Bonbini Festival, which is a papiamento word for welcome. It was designed as a way to welcome visitors to the island to showcase the island's history, customs, holidays, and local music and dances. There's live music and an MC who will go through the Aruban calendar chronologically, highlighting important uh, cultural events. And the purpose of the festival is to explain and showcase Aruban history and culture through music and dance. It's kind of weird that we're seeing the Welcome Festival on our last night, but that's the way it played out. festivals and celebrations we have starting from January up until December. We have many traditions here in Aruba, some of them who that we inherited from our past, some are new. <laughs> Last year, on April 27th, we crowned a king, King Willem Alexander, and he is now the king of the Netherlands. So this year, we're going to have a double celebration. Woo we celebrate everything. We're going to celebrate on the 27th, and we're going to celebrate on the 30th as well. The 27th is King's birthday, and the 30th is Queen's birthday, because we still want to honor the queen. One of the things that I'm going to present to you is a typical dance honoring Queen's birthday, and it's called the Ribbon Dance. Season. And sometimes we 
even seen floods here in Aruba. Yeah, I've seen them, and it gets scary. But what happens after the rainy season is we get the harvest season. I'm going to present to you the dance group, which is going to perform the harvest dance for you. Now let me tell you the story about the St. John celebration. This started many centuries ago. It was a tradition that originated in the country of Guatemala. And it's a celebration of the end of the harvest season. What people would normally do is they would gather the remainders of the harvest, they would put them at the center of the field, and then they would burn it up. And then they would ceremoniously dance around the fire on the rhythm of St. John on this song. Now aside from that, they would make an offer, and the sacrificial animal back then was a rooster. They would bury the rooster up to his head, and then normally, there would be dancers around the fire, the female would blindfold the male, they would spin them around. They would give the male a stick in his hand, and he would have to dance and locate the rooster in the ground. And because we have children in the house, I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen, but you can imagine. We don't do those things anymore on the island of Aruba, because we're civilized, and we believe in the animal rights. But nowadays, we still keep you the celebrations of St. John. I have to tell you the story though about Carnival. Now, Carnival really started in the 30s on the island of Aruba when we brought the refinery on the island of Aruba. And we had to import many workers from the British Caribbean. And they brought their traditions with it. For example, people from Trinidad and Tobago, they brought a tradition of Carnival to Aruba. But Carnival back then was celebrated in houses and private parties and in clubs. It was on 1954 that a committee was formed for Carnival and they had the first official parade on the streets of Aruba and that was the official start of Carnival on the island of Aruba. Now, everything starts on the 11th day at the 11th hour 
of the 11th month, but things heat up right after New Year's. That's when we start with the celebration of Carnival. People will be wearing all these beautiful, elaborate, huge costumes, and they, trust me, they'll be dancing from around 9 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night in the heat of the sun, two days in a row. And then everybody wearing their costumes again will ceremoniously at 12 midnight dance around them as we hang them on a pole and we light them up. That symbolizes the end of carnival season in Aruba. Amazing culture in terms of friendliness. 